My name is Richard Walker. I'm a professor of geography at UC Berkeley and specialist in California and the United States, landscapes, history, and urbanization, and also an economic geographer, which has no relevance at all to what we're doing today. <laughs> in this photo, what is emphasized is the three classic buildings and the Sather Tower, the Campanile, with the Lawrence Labs up on the hill, with that great shotgun lab building, the uh, Hall of Science, and so on. Uh, there was a contest to design a new campus in 1900, paid for by uh, Phoebe Hurst. And, and that's where we get all those neoclassical buildings, because at that time, public buildings, and they really were public buildings, were almost always designed in Beaux-Arts neoclassical style. So public libraries and city halls all over the United States are in this style. The Doe Library and a number of the, the fundamental buildings around the center of campus are in this style. And it's quite, <clears throat> it's quite elegant. I quite like it. You'll notice how it contrasts with South Hall, which is a vic classic Victorian brick building. You can't see it too well here. And Moses and Stevens, which are done in that neo-Gothic style to remind us of Oxbridge, part of that looking back for models of the university, uh, the great college system of, of uh, Britain. And then it also contrasts, of course, uh, with the Campanile, which is the knockoff of the Campanile in Venice. It's the Renaissance revival. So turn of the century, a lot of classical Renaissance revival in buildings. It bespoke a kind of elegance, a kind of European dignity and seriousness that this was a center of learning in this new country uh, that could rank with European, classical European centers. This goes back to sort of the old heart of campus. Well, first of all, these buildings, Stevens, Moses, and Wheeler, are named after university professors or presidents. And of course, today, almost no building is named after anything except a donor. Now, Campanile, which nobody knows as Sather Tower, is named after a donor, the Sather family, Peter Sather, uh, who made money in the gold rush. Wheeler Hall, named after Benjamin Ide Wheeler, the key president at the turn of the century. Wheeler was the president who had this alliance with Phoebe Hurst. We have South Hall, which is the original College of Agriculture, building, and we have Moses Stevens Hall complex here. Stevens Hall here was the original student union, named after a professor named Stevens, who was much beloved and loved students and was probably gay. And uh, right in front of it is Moses Hall. Stevens was a very nice man by all reports, I think, I can't remember what he taught. Moses was the chair of the political science department, and as Gray Bracken points out in his book, Imperial San Francisco, Moses was uh, one of the great intellects behind American imperialism in the early 20th century and helped design the um, occupation of the Philippines when the U.S. conquered it. So even <clears throat> where we have professors, they're not always the most the people I would choose to remember. So <clears throat> it's not like the university in the past uh, has, you know, was a clean and beautiful and lovely institution of higher learning and uh, a meeting of scholars. It was also, as Brecken has pointed out, an instrument of imperialism and American power. And then finally up on the hill we have, <clears throat> uh, I forget which the name of this one, but it's part of the Lawrence Lab uh, complex, which at that time, by the way, is still um, the Lawrence Radiation Lab. It's now known as Lawrence Berkeley Lab. It's become an energy research. But in those days, it was part of uh, E.O. Lawrence's whole operation that included uh, this, the Lawrence Livermore Labs, where they developed the hydrogen bomb, and of course, uh, Los Alamos Labs, where they developed the atomic bomb. And those are still run by the University of California, which is, this manages the nuclear weapons programs in the United States and always has. So <clears throat> even in this golden era of the public university after World War II, uh, UC was deeply implicated in the development of the bomb and American Cold War militarization. 
Um, and notice that it's a very high modern uh, building jutting out of the hill, you know, showing strength and all that. Uh, Brecken has an interesting discussion in his book, Imperial San Francisco, about the connection between the older kind of imperialism of Moses and the E.O. Lawrence kind of modern, muscular, scientific, technological imperialism, uh, of which UC was also a part.